Welcome back everyone and I'd like to invite you and welcome you to panel one where we'll be talking about inclusive infrastructure, both digital and physical and uh, I think most excitingly to me personally, uh, where the two meet together. And with us, we have four esteemed panelists today who will be talking about inclusive infrastructure and especially uh, transportation. So uh, let me just make sure I get everyone's names and title correctly. First, we have Dr. Steve Robinson. Please give him a warm welcome, Senior Manager of Land Transport Authority. Then we have Mr. John Tan, uh, Deputy Director of Bus Operations from SMRT. We have Mr. Sean Liu, Vice President of SBS Transit. And Mr. Kyle Lee, uh, Head of Smart City uh, Solutions Business Team from Hyundai Motor Group. All right, so before we kick things off, uh, every one of our panelists here have a particular uh, interesting project in terms of how they decide to address in terms of inclusive uh, transportation and infrastructure, how the organization has decided to select certain innovative technologies, engineering solutions and infrastructure to yeah, make Singapore a little bit more inclusive for everyone. So I guess we'll uh, get started with Dr. Steve Robinson. So he'll be sharing a little bit about how LTA has been using some uh, interesting ways of helping people with disabilities navigate around Singapore. So yeah, Dr. Uh, Steve, take it away. Okay, thank you. So um, I'm from Land Transport Authority, and for those from outside of Singapore, Land Transport Authority look after all the public transport in Singapore, the buses, the MRT, and the roads. So I'm going to talk, uh, but I work mainly on the buses. So I'm going to talk about Mavis. Um, so uh, Mavis stands for Mobility Assistance for the Visually Impaired and Selected Users. And it's a smartphone-based system which uh, interacts with equipment on the bus to make it easier for persons with disabilities to take, use public buses. And in particular, the person with disability sets up their trip in the smartphone and they're going to get personalized guidance thereafter. But the really novel thing about Mavis is those trip details are then sent to the bus systems. So then we can do lots of exciting things on the buses, such as forewarning the bus captain, bus driver, in advance that the, uh, a PW is going to board or light, and we can make uh, automatic audio announcements for the PWD. And rather than me boring you with lots of speech, we've got a nice little video which really illustrates the system in action. So I'll play a video now. Mavis, the mobility assistance for the visually impaired and selected users, it's a smartphone-based system that makes it easier for the visually impaired and wheelchair users to use public buses. Users with special needs are able to submit trip requests through the Mavis smartphone app to have a personalized journey guidance. After launching the Mavis app, a list of the nearby bus stops will be populated. Users can select the desired boarding bus stop. 139 towards BT Mera IMT. Accessible bus. Departure at 10.55 am. Upon choosing the boarding bus stop, a list of all the available buses at the chosen bus stops will be displayed. The list includes the bus's destinations and the estimated arrival times. Travel Companion, button. Choose a lighting stop. Users can select the bus and click on Travel Companion button to proceed in selecting their desired lighting stop. Activating Travel Companion will inform the bus driver of this trip about your participation. Activate, button. Users will then have to activate the Travel Companion to begin the personalized journey guidance. At the bus stop, users are informed of the estimated arrival of their bus and how many stops away the bus is from the boarding bus stop. In 4 minutes, departure to neighbouring village. 
take 139 at 1056 a.m. towards BT Mirror INT. Vehicle three stops away, 600 meters. When the bus is approaching the boarding bus stop, a pictogram will be displayed on the bus captain's display monitor to notify them of the boarding Mavis passenger. The bus will automatically play an audio announcement for visually impaired users to inform them that the bus has arrived and to help them in locating the boarding door. This service 139 to Bukit Mera Interchange. <laughs> During the journey, users are able to track their trips in real time. To prepare the users to alight, the Mavis app will also inform users when the bus is one stop before their destination. A pictogram will be displayed on the bus captain's display monitor to notify them of the alighting Mavis passenger. Upon the trip completion, the Mavis users may also rate their trip and provide feedback. Uh, okay, so thanks for that. So this may... Well, thank you. So this Mavis system is currently being trialled on 30 buses in Singapore, including Service 139, which serves the um, uh, SG Enable. Um, and we collaborated with SG Enable, SAVH, Init, and I'd like to thank SBST2, who runs services 139 and 141. And it, this aligns with LTA's Land Transport Master Plan 2040. Um, so this trial has really taught us lots of things about assistive technology. And solutions such as Mavis offer the opportunity to be a game changer to make public transport accessible for certain sectors of our community. However, it can be expensive and complicated to develop such technologies. And there really are some challenges to be overcome to allow us to roll out such assistive technology. Examples of this include having a relative small market, cybersecurity, um, authentication that a user is generally a PWD person, and vendor lock-in. There are lots of proprietary solutions out there, and we don't really like to be locked into a single provider. So how do we overcome these? Well, some solutions are knowledge sharing. So experiences of development and best practices of assistive technology should really be shared between all sectors of industry. So we should be writing project reports and papers and sharing them with each other. We should be having workshops like today. So it's really fantastic is it what Zero Project and SG Enable are doing. So thanks, everyone. And re really, we need to build a community to, of like-minded organizations to share this information. Secondly, we need to be building industry standards. Interested parties should push the incorporation of assistive technology at industry standards organizations. And LTA are doing this, for example, at the IT4PT, which is for the bus and transit industry. And we need to be developing APIs so that third-party developers can use uh, all these interesting technologies we're developing. So maybe in future, there can be a single super app which provides all this exciting functionality. And then uh, uh, we should be ensuring that our suppliers adhere to these standards by writing them into any tender documents we do. And then the other solution, which is maybe more of a personal um, uh, feeling, is that we need to begin making assistive technologies a little bit dual use. So when designing assistive technologies for specific groups of PWDs, we should be identifying possible uses of this technology by other groups, even including able-bodied persons. And by doing this, this will increase the benefits of rolling out the solution more widely. And importantly, it will encourage industry to begin investing in this because there's obviously more avenues for them to make a return. And that's what we've found when we've worked with uh, industry players here. Yeah. So, yes. So, uh, if you want to uh, find out more about Mavis or even trial the solution, then uh, do contact me. And you can also download the app at this website here. So, just contact me after this. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Steve, for sharing. And yes, you can use Mavis today. Uh, so 
Yep, it's, it's been on the App Store for many years. And uh, examples like um, if you saw the video that Steve was showing earlier of uh, people with visual impairments using text to speech, that's exactly the kinds of technology that people like myself, as a person with a visual impairment, that's what we use on a very regular basis. And you know, integrating that with existing assistive technologies uh, is what makes it all work. So. I think to elaborate a little bit more on that, we'll have John from SMRT to share about what SMRT has done with NaviLens. So just to take, take about five minutes to share on what uh, NaviLens has been up to, five to six minutes, and uh, yeah, this is uh, all a bunch of interesting uses of technology that we have here. Yeah, before I dive straight into uh, NaviLens, I would like to share some inclusivity features at SMRT and what we are doing for, uh, to help inclusivity with a special focus on NaviLens empowering the visually impaired. Yeah, so at SMRT, uh, we really believe this thing called go to SMRT, we love to help. So at any time, anybody at at the interchange, if you need help, if you are feeling unwell, if there is uh, people that you spot having uh, dementia, who is uh, having trouble going around or going home, please just come to us because we really have uh, service training for our interchange staff to deal with uh, the various uh, issues. And uh, we always tell our staff and everyone that we meet is, at buses, we care. With that, um, at SMRT buses, we actually work with a lot of the SSAs, uh, Rainbow, APSN. Uh, in fact, we have worked with uh, Kwek Bin, uh, Hongsei, uh, with a lot of our uh, projects. Like, for example, at the interchange, we, we come out with uh, murals uh, that actually showcase the great artwork done, done by the students. We also have like learning journeys for the sparkle thoughts for elderly to let them move around the interchange better, as well as uh, some of the others I will, which I will go in deeper later. Um, at the bus interchange itself, we also strive to make it as inclusive as possible by having priority zones where you know uh, pregnant women, people in wheelchair. Uh, will be able to wait at a designated corner instead of having to queue up with the rest. Having a huge uh, wheelchair will probably not be able to let them go through the queue. And uh, we also have a bus boarding assistance panel where you actually press the button before you wait so that when the bus captain arrives, he knows that he will need to come down and deploy the ramp for them. Uh, wayfinding signages is uh, one that we have developed for uh, the elderly or, or uh, children uh, who have difficulty uh, finding the bath, birth and all that. So what happened is that we have huge fruits and uh, through the SSA uh, collaboration, we realized that you cannot just put a fruit, you need to slice the fruit so that uh, it will be uh, recognized easier. And we also have the We Care room where um, for whatever help that is needed, we'll bring them to the room, maybe waiting for their family to pick them up, or if they are injured, to help them. Um, dementia go to point, as mentioned earlier, uh, our, our staff are trained to be able to uh, handle cases of uh, 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 dementia, uh, people with dementia who, who lo lose their way or lose their family. Okay. I know I only have a very short time, so I am <laughs> rushing through. Now, with the focus of NaviLens. Okay, what is NaviLens? Uh, basically, NaviLens is a first in Asia implementation. Uh, provides audio assistance to visually impaired through this color-coded text. It's not your typical QR code. And this has actually been uh, deployed not only in Singapore, but LA, Madrid, New York. Okay. More importantly, if you look at the slides, basically the, the strength of this app is that it, it has almost an instantaneous read. So you don't need to point at the QR code. As long as it's in the general direction, it can detect multiple texts and it will be able to be triangulate where you are and lead you to where you need to go. There's no need to focus and it 
because of the triangulation, it gives you a very accurate distance and angle of where you are so that it will be able to bring you to where you want to go. Uh, best of all, it, it works in very low lighting condition as well, so it's not uh, dependent on what kind of lights is being installed at the location. Last but not least, uh, like uh, QR code, you don't need, uh, unlike QR code, you don't need to be so close. You can be uh, reading it up to 12 meters away. So with that, uh, an app is an app. If uh, the, we didn't engage the right user, it wouldn't be user-friendly. That's why for this to be successful, we really need to uh, try it out with uh, the various organizations such as the one listed SAVH as well as the Guide Dog Singapore. So after that, only when we are very um, uh, convinced that this app is working well, uh, before we actually implemented at all our bus interchanges, which includes WITH, Bukit Panjang, as well as Chachukang. More importantly, we feel that it should not stop there because uh, uh, our visually impaired friends actually have to travel from home all the way to their location. So it should really be promulgated as much as possible uh, at the bus stop or inside the buses. Or, uh, in fact, with our train colleagues, we are trying to integrate to the train station. Like Woodlands Interchange actually connects to our train station. It should, have, it should become a seamless journey for them. And actually, if we proliferate even further, even on uh, products, uh, then it will truly be an app that they can use not only for transportation, but for their daily lives. That's why I thought such uh, forum, and uh, we are really uh, very privileged to be invited here to, to speak because we really want to spread this. We, we feel that it should not stop at public transport. And through, only through collaboration and SMRT is open to share as much as we know and to even help as much as we can to proliferate this so that it will be used uh, through all public transport. Then uh, we can really be inclusive. But SMRT, we, we only, as of now, host trees interchange and that's the boundary that we have. So through the help of everyone, we hope to spread it more uh, uh, as much as we can. Last but not least, there's the QR code there for whoever that is interested, you can download the app. Of course, you can just go to uh, the Play Store as well as the Apple Store. Uh, it's available there. We have also recently launched the other one called Navilands Go. Actually, that's for everyone else. Uh, if you are lost at the interchange, uh, just download the app. You will, you will be able to bring you to the berth or, or the bus stop that you want to. Thanks. That's, that's all I'm sharing. All right. Thanks, John. So I think one thing that that particular sharing really highlights is that inclusion and uh, social innovation doesn't always have to be this big, flashy thing. You know, it's not always about AI or, you know, some kind of very big uh, solution. It, sometimes it just comes down to a bunch of small things. Right, training for staff, making sure that there's points allocated for people to be able to solve their problems, like the go-to point for people with dementia. And uh, little things in considering uh, the types of solutions that we use, right? For NaviLens, there were all these features, like uh, how it scans the QR code and how it delivers the information to people with vision impairments that really makes the big difference. And I think that's something that we, we really want to highlight. I think all four of the panelists will, will touch on this particular aspect, but I just wanted to highlight it because uh, John's sharing about how they embark on inclusion really breaks it down into really small pieces uh, and shows how they put uh, everything together to facilitate inclusive uh, infrastructure. So thanks, John. And next up, uh, tackling a very similar problem, but in quite different ways, we have Sean, who will be sharing how they use uh, uh, this solution called WayMap for uh, SBS Transit. And just to let you know, I, I was personally involved in the testing of this particular solution as well. So you might see my face on the screen, but yeah, Sean, I'll let you take it yeah. away. Yeah, your face will appear very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to change the pattern a little bit. I'm going to stay seated if you don't mind. All right, uh, so I'm Sean. Uh, so, so wonderful to be here uh, to talk about something that is, you know, 
a very personal and professional interest of mine, and, and that is about promoting uh, inclusive journeys on our public transportation enabled by assistive tech. And, and that, that is very aligned, and then we've been working with SG Enable very closely in these areas. Uh, but I thought maybe I would just like to uh, take this opportunity to kind of uh, reintroduce SBS Transit uh, very quickly, and, and more importantly, the way ahead and how uh, community and inclusivity are very key focus areas in our roadmap ahead. Um, now, um, I think we have a very young crowd, you know. I, I don't think many will recall, if you look at the little nice uh, artist impression, you know, it all started, the SBS Transit family story just started in 1973 when three bus companies amalgamated to form SBS Bus. All right, that's how we started, and we are 50 years old, this year. Uh, we've been part of the Singapore story for a long time, all right? Uh, and, and really, it engenders that, that very strong connection and affinity uh, to the people in Singapore. Now, moving ahead, if you can see a quick uh, run-through of the, 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 the graphic art, you know, um, in, 20, in 2000, we turned uh, multimodal with the introduction of real. Right, so we have a Northeast Line, Downtown Line, Sengang, Pongo, LRT at the turn of uh, the millennia. Right, so, uh, so that's who we are um, in terms of what we provide as a service. But I, I thought I want to talk a little bit of where we're heading. Uh, and, and this kind of uh, give you an idea of the focus areas moving ahead. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit more quickly. Um, but perhaps uh, the key takeaway is this little tagline. We see ourselves not as just helping people to commute. We re-realize our role as a public transport operator that we help connect communities, in, in, you know, physically, you know, in hearts and in minds. All right? So that, that is kind of a philosophy moving ahead. So in terms of operational excellence, uh, there's a lot of things we're going on. It is enabled by tech, but it's the way we think we do our business. Uh, very quickly, I just want to say that, you know, with 4th IR, data-driven approaches are really the key, all right, to many things. A uh, quick example is that we are using AI to uh, kind of schedule our trains so that when the peak hour comes, we have enough trains. When we don't have many riders, we reduce the number of trains, all right, and this will help productivity, sustainability. That's, that's the kind of direction that we're moving towards, just to give you an idea. And then sustainability is a very big, you know, global interest focus areas, right? And, and we're doing our part. And it's not just about solar. Uh, EV is coming in a big way. Uh, LT is introducing electric buses in a very big way over the years. Train is fully electric currently, right? But what we mean here in sustainability is from a different angle where, you know, it's about the commuters as well. How can we help the commuters be sustainable all right, in their commute? So instead of us you know, just focusing on the bus and the MRT journey, we try to see from an end-to-end point and we bring our transport partners, it could be the bike sharing company, the car sharing company, and we try to integrate to form an end-to-end -end journey to achieve sustainability outcomes. Now, this is a very important one. Um, you know, everything we do at SBS Transit, at the heart of it, is our commuters. Now, that picture that shows the, the, the happily married couple, yeah, they use our station as their, one of their wedding uh, photo shoot areas. So, so uh, it's open for booking, all right? <laughs> 50 stations and many more from SMRT, right? So, but basically, it is a, a new angle, right? When we look at public transportation nodes, it's no longer a transit. It is, to us, a community hub. And I think John mentioned something about the go-to dementia program. We have that too. If we need help, we just go to the station. We go to the bus, the change. There's someone there to help. All right? So that's how we reposition ourselves. And really, it's about serving our commuters better. And, and this is the key thing that I want to talk about. All right? So I just now mentioned that sustainability we see from end to end. Inclusivity as well. Now, today, the situation frankly, is that when you come to an MRT station, sure, you know, we are each trying to do our part to introduce assistive tech to enable the journey. But what happens when they step out? Does that, are they still enabled? So what we are trying to do, and I'm going to round off with a case study on Waymap SG, is how, it's not about technology. 
You know, credit to our tech partners is a wonderful solution, powerful. I'll talk a little bit more about it. But today, one of the key takeaways that I want to submit to you to consider is how we can come together to form this seamless end-to-end -end journey. All right? And it's beyond technology. So this is Waymap SG. Uh, we just launched it last month. It's fresh. Uh, it's available. It, it's now deployed at Tampines uh, uh, Central, the, the station and the bus interchange. Please go down there, download the app, have a try. All right. Now, but and, and I, I want to uh, highlight to Josh your your nice picture that appeared on the paper is also on screen together with Hanson and Claire, uh, wonderful partners. Uh, Josh has been instrumental and he helped us. I think Dr. Michael, you mentioned about local context. So. He helped us to do the localization. The way Singaporeans take buses is different from the way uh, the Londoners take it, right? So the way we call the buses, street names and everything, he helped uh, our UK partner to contextualize it and that is powerful, all right? That is important. Now, but I, I wanted to share with you, yeah, it's a smartphone-based app. It is free to download, you know. We map the station, we map the bus interchange, we form the end-to-end -end connection within that locality. And also, we added on shops along the Lingui. So today, Josh tested it, right? You can go to Bengawan Solo if you wanted to, from the MRT station. You can go to McDonald's, you can go to the fruit shop. So that was our big design challenge. Not just serving transit nodes, but serving the lifestyle of anyone and everyone. Right? No, but, but that is the takeaway that I wanted to, our realisation I'll share with you. Where does it, should it stop just there? There are many um, sh malls, right? There are community facilities. There is a CPF building there as well. And I'm trying to reach out to them. How can we as a community come together to continue the mapping? The science behind, the technology behind Waymap SG is actually the power of the map. The more places you map, the more contiguous, seamless journey you will have. And it's beyond transportation. It is lifestyle, work style, all right? But we need the power of the community. And that is our takeaway from our pilot launch. We were not chasing technology. We were chasing something bigger. It's about adopting a community-driven approach. And this forum is very crucial, all right? I'm so glad to be here because we can share on a larger scale and network out and send the message out. It's not about Waymap, it's about a community-driven model to make a society more inclusive, more accessible. There's no one, you know, one person, one silver bullet that really takes care of everything. Take small steps, I think Josh mentioned it, right? small steps, small actions. Uh, we will one day come to a point, and uh, I'm not trying to look to Steve, who is from LTA, you know, but uh, we each have our powerful solutions, but to the same commuter, does the commuter need to download so many apps? It is not really practical, not a natural way of life. We all go to Google Map because it is our instinct is unified, it's easy, uh, you know, but so that's something to think about. And the last point, just to round off, is that so technology is powerful over the last five years with the advent of fourth IR. We have seen changes that have made the world better, more powerful, you know, in, in many ways. But don't forget what I call the Troika element, the people and the concept. You know, so I think we talked about like-mindedness. So that's the essence of people coming together like now. Uh, as well as the concept. And the concept we're talking about is a community-driven approach. How can we come together to have certain consensus, certain shared direction, so that we do not duplicate and waste resources and precious time, and we can accelerate together? Yeah. So thank you very much for having us. All right. Okay. Thanks, Sean. And yeah, you know, stuff like stakeholder theory for those of you who went to business school. You know, it's not some nebulous concept. It's a real thing. And getting community feedback and working with partners in the community, focusing on that and customers and everyone else who uses your services, realizing that there's an impact, I think that's really crucial. So, uh, so next up, we'll have Kyle to talk a little bit about a recent pilot that uh, the company concluded uh, in collaboration with SG Enable and various other partners as well. And yeah, Kyle, take it away. Thank you, Josh. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kyle from Hyundai, and today I'm here to share uh, our recent work 
uh, that we did here in Singapore to help the, the mobility of a visually impaired group. Hyundai, as a smart mobility solution provider, we always want the end-to-end -end travel more accessible and barrier-free. Uh, so since it, well, it's, we are a car maker, we have done a lot of works uh, to make the vehicle more accessible. But this time, we went one step farther to touch the scenes of before or after riding uh, on a vehicle. We started off by setting some criteria, like the solution will utilize the current uh, existing infrastructure, be easy to use, and um, partner with the players in the ecosystem and not work alone. So we have partnered with uh, SG Enable, SAVH, and two tech companies, and with joint uh, effort, we also created a wayfinding app that can be used indoor and outdoor as well for the visually impaired. So uh, let me give you a brief uh, standout about this app. So uh, like most of the wayfinding apps in the outdoor environment, they all use the GPS to uh, capture the current position. However, in the indoor environment, the GPS not work well. So this app uses a technology called uh, Wi-Fi fingerprinting, which captures the indoor position by capturing the Wi-Fi signals that is already there in the premise. And so regardless of your uh, current location, you, you're, you will be able to use this app in the indoor. And another uh, unique feature of the app is that it provides a, a vehicle arrival status. Plus, uh, it gives you the obstacle alert and the, the route guidance. Kyle, when did the pilot end again? Like, um, it's very, very recent, right? Yes, so the pilot went on for two and a half months, and it recently, um, about two weeks ago, we uh, finished uh, trying out this app. Yeah. yeah, so I guess uh, we, we'll be staying tuned to see more of that and this collaboration with SG Enable pan out. And yeah, you see, there's a lot of exciting things that are happening in the space. Now, the, in the interest of time, I'm going to uh, jump to Q&A. Uh, there's a lot of questions that I'm sure everyone here would like to ask, and uh, I have many questions myself. But in the interest of time, because we're overrunning, I will condense it down to... One question for each of you panelists, okay? Shall we do that? So, uh, starting with Steve and then going downwards from there, my question is, when it comes to you know, designing inclusive infrastructure, and especially when we use assistive technologies, right? all four of uh, uh, the panelists here, all four of these organizations have implemented some kind of uh, social innovation and assistive technology project in some way. One of the most common feedback that I get in my area of work when I talk about these kinds of solutions is, well, people with disabilities, sure, they're one of the largest minority groups, but they're still a minority. Right? Why do we have to uh, give so much thought to such a small group? So if each of you panelists could summarize your thoughts on this subject in one sentence, you know, what would you say to people who give the feedback that, you know, why are we uh, spending so much time and effort and thought into catering to people with disabilities. Yeah. How does it affect people who are not disabled as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a fantastic question. So um, um, obviously, um, uh, uh, LTA, we have a Land Transport Master Plan 2040, which highlights transport for all and inclusivity. And that's why one reason we're doing, everyone's working so hard on these accessibility initiatives. What really interests me about, and what I find really exciting, as uh, sort of I have an engineering background, and what I find really exciting about working with uh, visually impaired wheelchair users is because the technologies that we are creating today to help visually impaired and wheelchair users take public transport, these have lots of other really great uses, like when I look at the Mavis application, I mean, today we're designing this system to make it easier for VIs to use buses. 
But I imagine in 20 years' time, when we have autonomous buses, when we have demand responsive travel, we're going to need something like a smartphone app talking to equipment because there's no bus captain there. So in a way, working with the VIs, PWDs now, we are encountering challenges today 10, 20 years ahead of time. So uh, that's one thing I find really exciting. And when you design solutions for the visually impaired and wheelchair users, you're creating solutions for other people. Um, I used to work at London Buses. And um, in London, when they first rolled out low floor buses, bus without steps, it was done for the benefit of persons in wheelchairs. But they actually found that the group of people who benefited most from low floor buses were parents with young children who could now take strollers onto the bus. And so when you design for uh, the visually impaired wheelchair users, we're helping everyone, and particularly in Singapore, it's, uh, you can probably, uh, it's a rapidly aging community, and obviously the technologies we uh, design for VIs, uh, 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 wheelchair users, really help a lot of the elderly too. So that's why I think it's fantastic to design uh, inclusive technologies. Oh yeah, so thanks, thanks for sharing. And um, I think I am going to be flagged very soon for overriding, so I think we'll have to end it there. But um, all of you, uh, all of our panelists here, Kyle, Sean, John, and uh, Steve, they'll be here to answer any questions if you want to ask them. And of course, all of the apps that were featured are uh, available on the, on the App Store and the Play Store. So feel free to give it a try. Like uh, Navilands Go, for example, is uh, uh, something that people who are not vision impaired can use, and even Waymap as well, uh, to have audio cues that give you instructions on where you need to go. These are things that I think regular people can use in their daily lives as well, because not everyone is a Google Map, right? So thank you all for sharing. This has been an insight into how we can build inclusive infrastructure. So I hope you can see that the future is very bright, and yeah, we have some really smart solutions that we can use to take uh, Singapore into a more inclusive society so that everyone can enjoy the same things that you all enjoy. So thank you. Give our uh, panelists a round of applause.